Hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and this video is to show you the orchids I have in flower in July. It seems I have a few in flower and it's very funny because not very long ago I was the kind of person who had no orchids in flower in summer at all. Maybe a few fowls but that was it. I tended to focus my attention on the winter months when there was nothing going on in the garden. But times have changed. And what I've done is just gathered all of the orchids I have in flower together in, um, well, this spot out here on a table in the garden, just to show you them off together, like kind of flower arranging. So please don't comment down below asking if this is where I grow my orchids, because I don't. I live in Ireland, so my orchids grow in the house and they've just come outdoors for this video. So where am I going to start to tell you uh, about each of these? And I guess I'll start over here on the left where I have this Latoria dendrobium in flower again. Now this one has produced a couple of new spikes and the previous spikes lasted for ever so long and now it's got more and there's even more coming because if we look up here, there's another one there opening. So it really is long flowering. I can't say enough good things about it. This one is called Dendrobium Lutin Blanc and um, uh, hybridised in Belgium, I believe. And it really is a sweetie, not a showstopper, but with something that flowers for this long and has such interesting little flowers, certainly deserves a place in my collection. Of course, I can't talk about any of the rest of you. And beside this dendrobium, just moving down here, is Papiopedilum Pinocchio, which is a sequential bloomer and throwing up one spike at the moment. Now, I think those flowers look particularly lovely with the sun behind them. As you can see, there's a bud hanging down, so that's one that's going to come a little later on. But I've had this one for a good number of years and it's a very reliable flower. Moving over from the path, we see a couple of fowls, the, well, I don't know, the mandatory uh, no ID fowls that everybody seems to have. I have a purple one and a white one in flower and, well, that's good, always welcome. Just to the right of the fowls, we see an unusual looking orchid. Well, I think it's unusual anyway because it doesn't really say orchid to me first when I see the flowers, but it is an orchid. And this is Neobentamia. I bought this plant in the market in Madeira in January this year and it was, well, it was pretty much a cakey at the time. I've given it Cattleya light and yeah, it's potted in bark with some sphagnum on top. If we just look down here, you can see how it is. And it's proved trouble free. I've lost a couple of the buds this time round. Well, this is the first time it's flowered for me, so um, I don't know how quickly they shrivel and how long they last. But yeah, I think it's doing really well for a first flowering and I'm very happy to have such an unusual orchid in my, in my collection. Look at that uh, little flower on the left hanging down. It looks almost like a snowdrop. Moving down from the Neobentamia, we have a Cattleya. The only Cattleya currently in flower for me. And I've kind of cheated with this one because those of you who saw my unboxing video from Orchids and More in Germany will see that this actually arrived in, in bud um, from the nursery. So I haven't had it very long and obviously I can't take credit for flowering it. But isn't it just a gorgeous sweetie? Now normally I go for big flowered cats and this one is quite small but the flowers are gorgeous and they open fully. It's always good when Cattleya flowers open fully and don't just kind of, yeah, not have the courage of their convictions. Here he is from the other side and look at that cute little nose on him. I think it's just gorgeous. I'm very happy I ordered this one. Moving over to the right, we pass by some leaves, but here we have Dendrobium Comet King. And this is an orchid I've had for a very, very long time. I'll put a link to the video 
up above that I made about it a while ago but it is a nobile type and a very reliable flower this one is just opening that one's in full flower now this flowered for me earlier on in the year and now it's flowering again probably because it didn't have a very cold winter rest it's um, kind of had half-hearted flowering on two occasions but you know when I say half-hearted flowering that's a respectable flower count as far as I'm concerned many other orchids you know they would only ever produce this many flowers um, at, when they were at their best there are those beautiful flowers again and normally I don't give this plant any kind of winter rest at all so well you can gauge from that exactly how easy it is and leaving behind the dendrobium, we see behind it, this big plant is Prostechia cochleata, which used to be an encyclia, but had a, a bit of a name change. And it's a large plant and a very reliable flower for me. I have lots of spikes on it at the moment and uh, expect it to go on for a good period of time. And at the back of the display, we have my frag, Frag Grande one that I was given recently by a friend of mine in England and uh, thanks very much Eddie it's just going on and on I think this might be the last flower because there's no there are no more buds forming but uh, well it produced three flowers this this time round so yeah really a lovely plant and I'm very glad to have it we expect it to go on to strong and better things and finally Vanda Macassa, Princess Macassa Blue. Due to recent reclassifications, this plant is now a Vanda. But that doesn't deter it one little bit for producing many reliable and beautiful flowers. And it really is a gorgeous one. Very easy to mind. And flowering this time round in a glass vase, as you can see. Now I had grown this plant um, hanging just loose, misting its roots every day or every second day for the last while but I'm in a transition period now with my Vandas and I'm looking at migrating them all to bark. This one came into bud when I was doing that so I decided to just leave it in the glass for the time being. The flower count this year is seven flowers and that is very respectable as far as I'm concerned. Just going in here a little bit so you can see the kind of lip on it how beautiful it is but my favorite bit is its neck see that beautiful twisty little twig that the flower comes out from the main stem on it doesn't look it doesn't look strong enough to support such a big flower but yet it does and that brings me to the end of my video on orchids in flower in July now a phenomenon here at Dwense it seems so my days of uh, a few fowls in summer have um, have passed. And here's an interesting angle to finish up on. So thanks very much for watching everybody. Hope you like this video and hope you'll check back again soon. Bye now.